question. <laughs> this one's from Shawnee Constant, and then we'll move on. Which Vincent Price role, this is for you as well, Gil, would yeah. you most like to fill in a reboot? And if it's not the abominable Dr. Fives, why not? Are you familiar with that series? No. Oh, yeah. I, I, I know of it, but I, did, I, don't, I, I don't know his films as much. What am I going to say? The ra- Oh, I'll take the Raven. I don't know what the fuck. <laughs> the Whales of August. The, oh, the Whales <laughs> of August. Remember that movie? The Whale with Betty Davis. <laughs> <and> Betty. <laughs> Shayra, where is everybody going, Shayra? Cut my hair, Shayra. Please cut my hair. <laughs> I, uh, I aired. I should have printed out some dialogue from the Whales of August between oh my Betty God. Davis and Gilbert could have done Vincent Price. Oh, that's a great idea. Oh, wow. Well, oh, next, well next time. We'll but you it. do have some papers in front of you. I do. Do you want to try this bit that we... Uh, Which one? Uh, it should, it's, just, it's just a straight movie dialogue read, but I think it'd be fun to hear you guys do it. Okay. It, it's the scene that I sent over from A Star is Born. Oh, my. All right. Gil, do you have it? Ah, uh, Yes. I would love to hear you two. This was actually Mario's idea. Well, I just watched this and I was like, we've got to do it because no one does a better James Mason than Gilbert. Oh, thank you. It's true. So this is about a minute and a half. This is a a scene early in the movie. Okay. Oh, yeah. All right. Ready? You got it, Gil? You You ready? ready? Yes. Yes. So this this is right after she sang The Man That Got Away. Correct. So if you go listen to The Man That Got Away when I sang it on the anniversary show. Then you can hear the scene. It'll all come together. But tonight, I'm not singing The Man That Got Away. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Mr. Maine. You turn up in the, the strangest places. Don't I, though? And you're cold sober. Well, you'd better make the most of it. Sit down for a moment. you Always sing like that. Uh, like, like what? The way you sang just now. I've never heard anybody sing just the way you do. <laughs> what do you mean? Good or bad? You ever go fishing? Uh-uh. Well, do you like prize fights? <laughs> ever watched a great fighter? I'm, I'm trying to Tell you how you sing. Do you mean like a prize fighter or a fish? Look, there are certain pleasures that you get, and there are certain pleasures you get little jabs of pleasure when a swordfish takes the hook or when you watch a great fighter. Getting ready for the kill, see... You don't understand the word I'm saying, do you? <laughs> no, not yet. Why don't you try bullfighting? <laughs> You're joking. But that's exactly what I mean. You'd know a great bullfighter the moment he stepped into the ring from the way he stood, from the way he moved, or like a, a, a dancer. You'd have to know about ballet. That little bell rings in your head. And then that jolt of pleasure. It's it's what happened to me just now. You're a great singer. Who, who, who me? Hasn't anyone told you that before? No, Mr. Maine. No one's ever told me that before. Maybe you're not quite so sober as you both thought you were, but, but, but thank you. I'm afraid I'm no good at, at, at talking about myself, Mr. Maine. Everything just runs together. Runs together? How? All over the place. Washing out my gloves and crummy hotel rooms and winning a contest on the radio and, and singing in joints. I can remember my first job singing with a band. And then one night stands clear across country. One, and then one night stands clear across country by bus, putting on nail polish in ladies' rooms and gas stations, waiting on tables. Wow. That was a low point. I'll never forget it, and I'll never do that again, no matter what. But I had to sing. 
I somehow feel most alive when I'm I'm singing. It's it's like you know, you don't want to hear this now, do you? Do you mind? Mind? No, I'm having a wonderful time. Oh. Is there anything more I should know about your fascinating life? There must be more. Oh, there is. There's a, there's a whole scrapbook full. And scene! <laughs> <laughs> That was dramatic. <laughs> One thing didn't make sense to me when I was reading that. Can we, can we get you guys to tour? I think we'd be great together. Uh, what is it? And then One Night Stands clear across. Oh, I think that's, that was a misprint. In there. I'm also, sorry. That I, was my fault. That was your fault. This is the, uh, I, I mentioned on the live uh, anniversary show, this is the hundredth year of Tony Randall's birth. It, the, wow. cent the centenary, is that the word? It, 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 is it really? Yes, 100 wow. years. And Mathau, 100 years. Wow. Well, yeah, there you we're, go. we're old. Oh, that is. And, and we talked about this, uh, Frank and I, that both there's no one living from either the movie or the TV show, mm -hmm. The Odd Couple. That's true. Well, a minor player from the series would be uh, Eleanor Donahue, who played Miriam, Felix's oh, girlfriend. Okay. <clears throat> And she's with us, but she's only in a handful of episodes. The key, yeah. the key actors are all gone. Yeah, the whole the pool one player. of the pigeon sisters uh -huh. is alive. Uh -huh. Ah, yeah. Well, you know, uh, I could see you guys uh, doing uh, the uh, the odd couple it. together. I could see I you would... doing the Sunshine Boys too. I, I yeah, well, I'm not that old yet, so go fuck yourself. <laughs> and you know, so I was Makeup. watching, the, I was watching that recently, going. Am I old enough to do that yet? No, I'm not. I'm still a pretty young homosexual that is in denial of his age. Well, Mathau, <laughs> they aged Mathau after Jack they Benny did. fell out. They did. They yeah. did. Yeah, uh, one for both of you. Dustin Hoff, H-A-U-F-F. -F. Uh, boys, what is your favorite Hitchcock film? Okay. Here's his rear window, he wants you to know. Gil? I'm going to be obvious and stick with Psycho. Okay. I got a toss-up. I love the birds mm -hmm. and I love rope. I love rope. I love ah. ropes. Ropes of written a... by Arthur Lorenz, the gayest. They and Hitchcock was like he made it with the, definitely the, the the intention of them being gay. And they wanted Jimmy Stewart's character to be to be gay too, but Stewart was like, "That's not happening." Uh, Gil. Oh, you already said it. Psycho. Yeah. 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 Psycho. yeah. I all I am I am very fond of Strangers on a Train. Uh, me too. Oh That's yeah. The other one. I agree. Paul D. Cullen Jr. Hey, Mario, seeing you on Match Game. Uh, on the old Match Game, neither Charles Nelson Riley nor Richard Dawson ever really seemed to want to be there. They gave Kurt answers and participated in a in few of the shenanigans. Was it not fun for them, or in your opinion, or was it just too good a job to give up? Uh, what, you, you mean that's how he felt that they were? Rich, I don't, yeah. There was a there was a dismissiveness about yeah. them, but that's what made them funny. I, especially Charles Nelson Riley. He was always like, Giving shit to Brett Summers, I I I, I yeah, love doing it. You're great. I, on love, it. I love the game shows. I'm supposed to do Pyramid again, but it's been postponed, like everything. But yeah, I just I love doing those game shows. You're great. I on them. do. I I remember growing up, I thought I would watch Hollywood Squares and think, okay, it's funny, but this is rock bottom for someone's career. It's <laughs> pathetic. <laughs> Then I wound up on Hollywood mm -hmm. Squares, and it, I loved doing it. Me too. I did it too, and it was so, when Whoopi was doing it. It was yeah. great. It yeah. was so fun Whoopi to do. And Tom. We can say we did Hollywood Squares. We yes, did the match game. We did Pyramid. It was a classic. The class. I mean, look, people are like, well, you'll do that. You won't do a reality show. Uh, yeah, because reality shows are for fucking whores. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I turned down Celebrity Big Brother. Go fuck yourself. I'm I not know that in about you. I, 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 I respect you for that. No way. And I needed a job at the time. And I didn't even negotiate up yet. I just said no. You are a man of integrity. Gil, what yeah. other game shows did you do other than Squares? Oh, me? Yeah. What? Oh, I, I did Hollywood Squares. I did... Uh, I turned it to James Mason there without knowing. <laughs> I did Hollywood Squares. <laughs> I'd love uh, to see him on Hollywood Squares. I did. What was the show that Donny Osmond was hosting? Pyramid. 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 You did that. I did that then too. Yes. I, yes. I did that. And uh, what else did I do? Not. Not that many.
I, I, I did Pyramid. When Donny Osmond was hosting Pyramid, I did that too. He was very nice. And now Strahan's doing it, who I want to climb. <laughs> By the way, you and Baldwin have a nice, you and Alec have a nice uh, chemistry. I love him. I love game. him. He loves me. He's very good to me. He comes and gets me every time they do it. And he always puts me like in that position where I'm near him. I, I just adore him. I, uh, he's, uh, he's a champion of mine. And I think he's funny, brilliant. Yeah, great he's talent. an incredible actor. You know, you, you look at something like um, uh, with the, 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 the Departed. Which is yeah. such a seriously heavy movie, and he's so funny in it. Yep, he's yep. just—it's amazing how he can just stay on the same page, same tone as everyone else is doing in the movie, and then he just—he's he, you know, an he just, actor that can play straight, like that wonderful movie he made, *The Edge*, with Anthony Hopkins, where oh, they're yes. lost in the wilderness. Yeah, or, or or do something funny like *Married to the Mob*, or uh, he, he can he can he can really do anything. Oh, or Thirty Beatles. Rock, he was funny. Thirty he Rock, he was great, he was, brilliant. Just, he's uh, he's magnificent. I love him to death. Quick no one, movies. Joseph Goulant. Hey Mario, uh, who's the better actress in your opinion, post stroke Betty Davis or post Pepsi Joan Crawford? I this is really probably a controversial thing to say, but I would say <laughs> that post Pepsi Joan Crawford. Yeah, how about I that? I think so. I think so because Betty Davis, after the stroke, what, what did she do? She did the uh, she did the Whales of August. She was good in that though. She was good in the Wicked Whales of Stepmother. August. Wicked Stepmother with Barbara Steele. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, she who who directed that? I knew him, Larry um, Cohen. Yeah, he took me out to dinner. He yeah, was, he was on this show. He was he and he told me about that they had to rewrite it because her jaw kind of fell apart or something. She had jaw problems and yes. they, they, she couldn't finish the picture. I think he told us. He told us the that too. wicked stepmother. <laughs> Are you familiar with a movie that I believe came out in 1970? We were talking on the phone, you and I, about mm -hmm. movies that are 50 years yep. old. A horror yep. movie called Trog with Joan Crawford. Oh, no, yes. Trog. That's a <laughs> Trog, you're a good Trog. No, Trog. <laughs> Sick Trog. That's a bad Trog. Oh, Trog, darling. Come to me, Trog. Mommy's got a banana for you. Trog. <laughs> Let me tell you about Trog. When I was filming Trog, my trailer was a Volkswagen van. It was humiliating. <laughs> but I had cases of Pepsi surrounding the van, used as barricades because I didn't have security. Gil, do you know that one? Oh, yeah. He's like, like a Neanderthal. Yep. Yeah, and in the worst costume ever. Oh. You, you think the head's going to pop off You any smell second. the rubber. Oh, it's, it's you should. <laughs> And <laughs> you do scratch and sniff trog. Speaking and of Joan Crawford, I remember here. Go ahead, Gil. Betty Davis, when she looked her most horrible, with the uh, crooked face and like, uh, you, how dare you? <laughs> she used to go on like Merv Griffin wearing a miniskirt. Well, no, she she actually went on David Letterman wearing a miniskirt. Yes. And, and and she and and she had buttons all over it and the very famous designer Patrick Kelly. Patrick Kelly designed this dress for me. There yeah. are buttons here and here and here and buttons on my hat. Large <laughs> buttons. <laughs> he went on Johnny Carson once yes. before the stroke with Richard Pryor, and he was so humbled next to her. It was incredible to see him how he behaved. He was was amazing, and she told. And then she went on. One on Carson twice after the stroke. And she told that whole story about um, Faye Dunaway. He said, "Who would you?" I posted this part of the part of it, uh, the interview because it was right after F uh, Faye Dunaway got fired from that Hep Catherine Hepburn uh, one woman show called uh, Table T for Five or something like that. But she was throwing things at the costume people in Boston at the out of, at the out of town tryout. They fired her because she was brutal. Um, but she said, he said to her, Carson said, who would you never work with again? And she said, one million dollars, Faye Dunaway. And he was <laughs> like, really? She was like, yes. Well, oh, she is totally and utterly impossible. <laughs> well, there we were. We were doing the, the movie Amy Simple McPherson for television. I was Amy's mother. She was Amy, who was a great evangelist. There we were with thousands of extras sitting there waiting for Miss Dunaway with their box lunches in their laps. 
Well, we waited for hours and hours. I sang, I've written a letter to daddy, to the whole crowd because they needed entertainment. I had to entertain the troops because that bitch took forever <laughs> to get back <laughs> to the set. And she finally did. And I said, did you get your fucking wig on correctly or what? <laughs> I paraphrase, but you know, that's what happened. Was she, she told me, by any chance, and this is probably a stretch, was she by any chance aware of your impression? Betty Davis? Yeah, because no. she was still, no, 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 still no, kicking I, around in those I days. Met her, I met her once before the stroke. Um, <clears throat> she was autographing her albums at um, that album that she sang. Oh, They're yes. either too young or too old. She sang all that, and she sang, she sang Mother of the Bride. Um, and I, I had the, I, she signed my album for Mario. And but, what was that movie also mm -hmm. that had to do with witches that was like the, went near the end. Oh, wow. And I think she either left or they fired her. That was the wicked stepmother. Yeah. That was the one that Larry Cohen directed. Yeah. Yeah. She, 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 she was, they, they, she, she left because her, supposedly her jaw was disintegrating. Oh, geez. Yeah. Wow. Yes, that will happen to you too, Gilbert. <laughs> back, give, it, give it a couple of hours. You'll feel some crumbs at the bottom of your mouth. Was she in another harm? Was she in Burnt Offerings? Or am I... Am I am oh, I... that's... And that's with Karen Black and all of them. Yeah, she was that in that too. That is the scariest fucking movie. It is. It's still scary. I didn't open the window. I didn't... I promise I didn't open the window. I didn't... That was a great movie. Remember that one? Here's one from 1970 that I know you guys know. A Crow Haven Farm with Hope Lang. This ABC movie of the week. Remember, Gil? No. About the Selma Witch Trials? No, the, uh, but I the think that vaguely. Trials? The Selma oh, Witch Trials. Vaguely. Vaguely. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, they, that's Spooky. interesting. The, I, the John ABC Carradine was in it. The ABC movies of the week were great. You know, they did some great stuff. Yeah, absolutely. Great. The Point. Sure. Sure. The Point. That, yeah. And, uh, Gil, here's some other horror movies that came out that year, if these mean anything to you. Bird with the Crystal Plumage with Tony Musanti. Oh, yeah. House of Dark Shadows, Trog, oh, yes. we talked about, and Blood on Satan's Claw. Blood 75 on years ago, Claw. Mario. What was it called again? Blood on Satan's Claw. Are you sure it wasn't nail polish? <laughs> <laughs> here's one for both of you as long as we're doing anniversaries. This year, Mildred Pierce is 75. What do you mean, oh, Vita? I'd rather cut wow. off my hand than... Hit you like that. Soon I was the best waitress in the country. <laughs> and Gil, 75 this year, House of Dracula. <gasps> oh, oh, House of Dracula. Yeah. Yeah. That's when it was time to give up. <laughs> That's when they, they, they somehow yeah. found a cure for the wolf man that he doesn't turn into a werewolf anymore at the end. And it was so stupid. Was House of Dracula Christopher Lee? I uh, know. Lon no. Chaney Jr. It was uh, Lon yeah. Jr. John, John Carradine was Dracula. Uh, Chaney was the wolf man. And then Glenn Strange was uh, uh, Frankenstein. And as the mad scientist, Onslow Stevens. Oh, my God. See, now that is amazing that you're an encyclopedia. So here's a pretty, things. here's a, a, a classic horror movie with, with some gay overtones, Mare. What? Bride of Frankenstein. Oh, God, yeah. Well, that, well, the, the, who, who was his assistant? It was like, it's, 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 oh, it's James Well. Thing. No, James Well was definitely, yes. but the guy that was played. Oh, Colin Fry. Clive. They they were, played oh, his no, assistant. no, 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 wait, wait. Come on, wait. the one, that, the real uh, gay one. Was oh, like, Ernest, yes. Ernest, Ernest yes. Messenger. Yeah. Him. Yeah, he, Dr. That's Pretorius. Where, that's where yes. the gay shit was, yeah. Right there, yeah. I, I remember when he's there and uh, Ernest Thessinger and the uh, Carlo folks in and goes, friend. And he goes, well, I should certainly hope so. <laughs> <laughs> He's like the Island of Mr. Uh, Toys guy. <laughs> oh, and they like say the, Ernest like the Thessinger, the in, when he was waiting around the set, used to knit. And he referred to himself as that knitting bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever see Gods and Monsters, Mario? Oh, With yeah. With McKellen as James Whale? 
Oh, and and very good. Brendan Fraser was beautiful in yeah, that. Also, very good. I love that movie. Very good. It's, and Lynn Redgrave. It's a it's a great movie. It's a good book too. Here's two for you. Turning eighty this year. Oh God. Pinocchio and Fantasia. Huh? Wow. How about huh? that? You know I love Jiminy. I know Cricket you're a Disney guy. Anything. Hey everybody, it's me, Jiminy Cricket. Let's go. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Come on, let's go to Pleasure Island. Come on, Pinocchio. Let's get out of here before you turn into a piece of ass. Come on. Um, yeah, I love Jiminy Cricket. He's my favorite. Uh, Pinocchio, I have Disney Plus, you know. Yeah. Um, but I'm a little pissed off because where's the happiest millionaire and where's the one and only original family band and where is Make My Music? What the fuck? Two Disney John Davidson Plus? movies. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Oh, I wow. Oh, my God. I have Happiest Millionaire on my DVR from Turner Classic. Did we movies. connect you to John? No, you I've guys, never met him. You guys would love each other. I saw him in Cohasset one time. He's sing. the best. In, yeah, he, I love it. Yeah, so Pinocchio and in and, and Fantasia too, huh? Yeah, both of them. And John, John Davidson was putting off doing this show for the longest time. And then finally he agreed to do it and he loved doing the show. I heard he loved it. Frank said he loved, loved, loved it. I'm going to introduce you, know, you everyone's guys. Everyone's afraid of you, Gilbert. Ma- no one I'm- wants to be in your presence because <laughs> you're too funny although i don't give a fuck because i don't think you're funny at all <laughs> i i you know that's not true you, oh you know that's not true christina um <laughs> but yeah i want to meet john davidson we will return to gilbert Gottfried's amazing colossal podcast but first a word from our sponsor Bending over to put your shoes on is a back-breaking chore. One wrong step, you could end up on the floor. And trying to get them off can hurt even more. Well, now there's Shoe Dini, the world's first shoe horn that lets you get your shoes on and off with ease. Shoe Dini has a telescoping handle that gives you the reach you need so you can slip your shoes on without bending over. And unlike regular shoe horns, Shoe Dini has a patented grip clip that holds your shoe in place while you take it off. Just slide it in and slip them off. Shoe Dini works with all your shoes. I want to return this duck. Why? It's very annoying. It just says the same thing over and over again. Go ahead, say it. Just say it. Just one say it. I just... Ah! What? anything like this. Those wholesome little O's have been frosted the whole way around for a crunchy sweet taste everyone's into. Stupendous! Gilbert, as I don't know if we've discussed this in any of your previous visits, but Gilbert was famously, uh, as we've discussed, invited by the late great Robert Osborne onto TCM to the Essentials. <gasps> yes, to that pick was... five films. That was such a treat. You, was, what, as a guest programmer? Uh, yes, yeah. yes. yes. I, 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 well, I did that too. I, I did it. What did I did you it pick? In two, I did 2005 or six. What did I pick? Yeah, do you I remember? Picked Mr. Skeffington. I picked, um, I picked A Woman's Face with John Crawford. Um, I picked Meet Me in St. Louis. And I forget the other ones. Mine, mine were Freaks. Uh, Todd Browning's Freaks. Oh, uh, well, of course uh, it was. Uh, Weren't you uh, in that? What? Yes. <laughs> the Conversation. Oh, wow. Okay. Good one. The original of Mice and Men with yep. Cheney and Burgess Meredith. Yes. And a very strange film, uh, The Swimmer with Burt Lancaster. Oh, I know that film. Yeah. Joan Rivers is in it. Yes. That's she right. has yeah. one scene by the yeah. pool. Oh, my God. That's amazing. Yeah, I, 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 he looks great in that in his little shorts swimming in that pool he's adorable it's been a pleasure it's been a pleasure thank you thanks so much for being here hi everybody i'm mrs norman maine do your james mason for me congratulations my dear I seem to have made it just in time. Well, there's no need to be formal. I, I know most of you gentlemen on a first name basis. Uh, I need a job. Yes, that's it. That's my speech. 
I need a job. It's not just drama. I could do comedy as well. Well, play something, someone. Uh, uh, Norman, <laughs> Norman, uh, Norman. Uh, 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 come on, Norman. No. Uh, everybody, uh, look the other way. <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to sing a song for Gilbert because it's something that I think I I would sing at his funeral and since he won't be there I'd like to sing. I hope I remember the words. I have a look. I have an iPhone. Liza gave it to me because uh, she doesn't know how to work it. Um, but I think I'll uh, you can cue me if in case I fuck up. All right. The night is bitter The stars have lost their glitter The wind grows colder And suddenly you're older And all because of the man That got away and undone you that great beginning has seen a final inning don't know what happened it's all a crazy game Good riddance, goodbye. Every trick of his, you're all too. But fools will be fools. And where's he gone? To the road gets rougher, it's lonelier and tougher. Hope you'll burn up Tomorrow he might turn up There's just no light up The live long night And day Ever since this world began There's nothing sad Looking for the man that got away. The man that got away. That's for your funeral.